Welcome, one and all, in here, out there, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Folks, I know... There, there are a lot of reasons people watch this show, but I know, first and foremost, you come for our rock-bottom prices. <laughs> Every episode of The Late Show is 100% free, as long as you keep buying whatever our advertisers are selling. <laughs> Of course, these days, a lot of that stuff is getting pricier because the new inflation numbers came out today and prices have jumped a whopping 8.5% since last March. 8.5%. That means no more splurging at the grocery store. Instead of Milwaukee's Best, it'll have to be Waukesha's, eh. <laughs> Which is, let's face it, not that much worse. Eh. Eh. How bad is this? These inflation rates are the highest since 1981. And keep in mind, back in 1981, things were so expensive, your cereal bowl had to double as your hat. <laughs> you, you had to crack that whip. You had to whip inflation now. You had to whip it good. Overall, the items hit hardest by rising prices are food, shelter, and gasoline, so you shouldn't be affected as long as you don't eat anything, <laughs> be anywhere, or go any place. <laughs> now, today, was this just today? This is just today. Down in Washington, in an effort to reduce gas prices, President Biden announced that he will be allowing gasoline that uses a 15% ethanol blend. Ooh, a blend. <laughs> it sounds so sophisticated. Mmm. I'm getting notes. I'm getting notes of Iowa corn, mm, <laughs> some some oaky hydrocarbons, and oh, this is really fracking my taste buds. Is this <laughs> is this from North Dakota? <laughs> this blend is called E15, and because it requires less crude oil, it can cost 10 cents per gallon less on average. Okay, so that's uh, what was that? 10 percent less. 10 percent. That's 15. That's 15 percent blend. Saves 10 pence per gallon, 16 gallons in a tank of gas. Average national price of... That comes out to... Yeah, still not enough to save the Democrats in the midterms. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. Not looking good. Uh, oh, moving on to COVID. Uh, we're in kind of a, kind of a weird time uh, for COVID. The national infection rate is ticking up, but we don't know by how much because of all the at-home tests. Still, some areas are taking action, like yesterday, when Philadelphia announced it is reinstating its mask mandate. Because it's Philly, people can choose between surgical masks, uh, KN95s, or full gritty heads. <laughs> but turns out it's not easy to ask people to put masks back on after they've had a taste of the face freedom. As CNN's Elizabeth Cohen explained. In general, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to get people to obey mask mandates again. To just say, hey, whenever you're in a restaurant or a store or wherever, wear a mask, I, I, I think that's going to be very difficult to do. I agree. It's already difficult enough to understand what Philadelphians are saying. I ain't had no crowd. I ain't had enough. Legs are going, everything is going, no one's getting no enough. Guy comes up offers me a fight. Big dude, want to fight the fight? Yeah, I'll fight the big fight. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure he was ordering a salad. <laughs> Dressing on the side. <laughs> the mandate will go into effect this coming Monday in order to provide a one-week education period for businesses. The mandate's only been over for a month. <laughs> How much relearning is there to do? It's not like every Christmas I go, why is there a tree in our house? <laughs> Who put this laundry on our mantelpiece? <laughs> Get our child off that old man's lap. <laughs> <You're> crazy. <laughs> Over in Ukraine, we are in week seven of Russia's supposedly three-day invasion. The sanctions have had a brutal effect on the Russian economy, so Russia wants to get us back. Last night, 
Our intelligence agencies warned that Putin may increase efforts to interfere with U.S. elections. And just listen to this Kremlin-connected pundit say it boldly on Putin's Russian state TV. It is time for us, for our people, to call on the people of the United States to change the regime in the U.S. early and to again help our partner Trump to become president. Again help? They're not even pretending anymore. <laughs> Russia's influence on the former president's campaign is going to be out in the open this time. That's why in 2024, he's already said he's replacing Mike Pence. His new running mate is Potato. <laughs> they gotta say. Delicious. It's like a Where's Waldo. <laughs> Gotta say, that potato has more charisma than Mike Pence. <laughs> but at least Putin has moved on to the next election. Unlike disgraced attorney and rest home gigolo, John Eastman. Eastman is the former president's former lawyer who hatched the brilliant plot to have Mike Pence overturn the 2020 election. And his election crimes have drawn the January 6th committee's attention. They've already gotten his documents and his emails from him, but he's not backing down. In fact, we just learned that Eastman is still pushing to decertify the 2020 election. That's right, the election that's been over for a year and a half, and that Biden won. To put that into perspective, when the election was decided, J-Lo was engaged to a different guy. <laughs> okay? She was... This is... She was the show. She was, she was engaged to Alex Rodriguez. Forget Benifer, she was supposed to be Mrs. Arad. <laughs> I believe that's what they call him. They call him Arad, right? Arad. Uh, yeah. I don't know about that. This, this is... <laughs> I don't know. No? I no, think that's no. how they pronounce it. Here's what happened. About three weeks ago, Eastman took a trip to Wisconsin and urged Republican Wisconsin Assembly Speaker Robin Voss to nullify the 2020 election, specifically to start reclaiming the electors and move forward with either having a new slate of electors seated that would declare someone else the winner or a do-over. A <laughs> do-over? <laughs> Our ex-president isn't allowed a do-over just because he didn't like the result the first time? That's how you get an Eric. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's just... See? There you go. There you go. Dangerous. Yeah. One problem uh, with Eastman's plan, all of it, He's trying to relitigate the 2020 election, which legal experts say is impossible. Only if you don't believe in yourself. That's why I'll never throw away my Mondale 84 signs. <laughs> Fritz only has to overturn 49 states. You're going down, Reagan. Down, down, down. Reagan's going down. Down, down, down. Ronnie's going down. Down, down. <laughs> Gotta believe. Eastman is not alone. America is full of radicals who sow chaos and distrust in our elections. Case in point, Georgia representative and star of Honey, I Shrunk the Anti-Semite, Marjorie Taylor Greene. As I said, Eastman is in the crosshairs of the January 6th committee, and Greene believes it's time they just get over it, as she said this weekend. The American people are fed up with this over-dramatization of a riot that happened here at the Capitol one time. Yeah. <laughs> but that one time was pretty bad. <laughs> Out of the hundreds of people I've met, I ate only one of them. And suddenly, <laughs> I'm Carl the Cannibal and a person of interest in an ongoing investigation. <laughs> Pass the ketchup. Get out. I want to finish my chicken fingers. I got a little something. I got a little something. Uh, there's major news news tonight, because last night, Rachel... Rachel? Rachel! <laughs> I call her Rachel. <laughs> Rachel Maddow returned to her show after two months off and made this startling announcement. I will be here this month, Monday through Thursday nights, and then starting next month, starting in May, I'm going to be here weekly. I'm going to be here on Monday nights, and we will never speak of it again. Oh, yes, we will. <laughs> 
Rachel, you're breaking your fans' hearts. Don't leave us with Lawrence O'Donnell. <laughs> he has dead eyes like a doll. <laughs> Hi, Lawrence. Rachel, Rachel was, he's a lovely guy. He's a lovely fellow. Rachel, cutting back to one night a week, raises an important question. Can you do that? <laughs> More importantly, how can I do that? <laughs> I've been doing a nightly show for 17 years. I'm aging faster than a bucket of unrefrigerated shrimp. <laughs> Rachel is switching to one day a week in order to work on other projects, like podcasts and potential TV dramas. TV dramas! I guess it's only a matter of time before we get Rachel in Paris. <laughs> We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Molly Shannon and Congresswoman.